for the perfect 3D printed gift for the person who doesn't really want a 3D printed gift? How about a 3D printed desk sign with their name on it? In this video I'm going to show you how to make a 3D printed desk sign. Uh, I use my name in this case but it could be anything. It could be a saying or a logo, some sort of drawing. So to begin, let's use Fusion 360. I use Fusion 360 for a lot of my projects, as you probably well know. Uh, we're gonna start a sketch and use the text tool to type the first word or name that you wanna use for the base of your sign. So pick a font you like and size the letters so that they are sized well. Consider the size of the bed and of your 3D printer and maybe what other images, text, do you wanna put on this sign. If you're just going with a simple last name or a single word, then make this as big as you can to fill up your printer bed. You can always scale it later uh, in your slicing program as well to make things fit better. So here's the real trick. Next, we're going to need to extrude the text out. In Fusion 360, the text is gonna come in as an image ordinarily. Right click on the text you just created and click Explode Text. This is gonna convert the text, which is an image, into vectors, a vector path. That, the, that, that Fusion 360 can use to extrude with. Uh, be sure you're happy with your font choice and sizing because at this point it's gonna be difficult to redo everything. Uh, at this point forward, you can no longer just change the font without redoing the text tool all over again. You can, however, edit the paths and vector lines, so you can do some interesting things with this as well. So I extruded my base uh, text at a half an inch um, depending on how big you want your sign to be, this is up to you. Uh, we need to create a base then to join all the letters together uh, and, and create a flat base for the sign to sit on. So we're going to use the rectangle tool and make sure you touch, just barely touch all the bottom letters of your text. If you don't connect to one of them, then that is going to print separate from the rest of them and may, you may have to glue it on later. We don't really want to do that. So you want to use the join option when you extrude as well. That will create a single component. You don't want to create multiple components with multiple STL files. That'll make the slicing a little more complicated and could possibly lead to errors. So join, and we're, we're, our goal here is to create a single component. So if you only want the last name, you're done now. But if you would like to add a first name, you can do this in many ways. I tried a few methods myself, depending on who the sign was for. You can simply make the base. You just made a little longer to the front and add the text in front of it uh, is the simplest method. You can also attach the base to the top of the last name that will connect to the bottom of the first name text. So you're basically stacking the first name on top of the last name. Feel free to be creative and consider slanting your text at an angle as well. The key is to be sure to connect the letters to the base. So any, any portion of the text that you want to be part of your sign needs to have a connector of some kind. that brings me to like the letter I. You need to connect the dot in the I to the base of the I. Simply draw a rectangle and extrude it so that it is smaller. You don't want to extrude full thickness otherwise you lose the dot. It doesn't look like a dot anymore. So just extrude a small maybe quarter inch piece to connect the dot in the I to the base of the I so that you don't lose that piece during 3D printing. Once you're happy with your 3D model, you should now have a single component that you can convert to an STL file. At this point you need to export an STL file to the slicer of your choice. I use Simplify 3D again. After importing I centered then rotated all the models diagonally to give myself the most space. Then increase the scale until the name filled the bed. For infill I typically went with a low percentage. Between 10 to 30 percent should work fine. The reason you may want to vary this infill is smaller more delicate fonts with little details may require more infill to make sure they're strong enough. You wouldn't want to use like a 10% infill on a small print like that. You may not be able to join everything. And this is where it's good to use the slice preview after you've sliced the model and it's showing you the, the actual uh, printed part in your preview. 
make sure everything here looks good. Make sure that you feel like you have enough material extruded that you're not going to easily break the part while removing it from the bed. So other things you can do is instead of printing with a solid top layer, you could use an interesting infill pattern through the base of the part like a hexagon. I know other slicers used to have other infill patterns like shark fill was my favorite with the uh, old makerware. So when you do that then turn off the solid fill top layers and you'll see a neat hexagon pattern through your part. This is another opportunity where you could use a translucent filament and see it even with solid top fill layers. So another great opportunity with these is to use some interesting some of the more interesting filaments that are coming out now. So you could use a metal filled filament for example. Uh, some of these will allow them to rust or they could be used even as magnets. Uh, I use carbon fiber from carbon fiber PLA from Proto Pasta for my name here. So you would ideally want to use the recipient's favorite color but multicolor prints are also possible. Simply pause the printer, change filaments, and so the first and last names, as long as they're extruded to different heights, could be different colors. So if your experience is like mine, you may end up having to print more than you expected. If you're looking for more 3D printed gift ideas, before Christmas I released a video on my favorite 3D printed gifts. Check out that video for more ideas.